Hi everybody, it is still October 2nd, 2018, sorry. Um, I have information to pass along to you about Christine Blasey Ford, as well as Kavanaugh, who you do not want sitting on the Supreme Court. I don't, I can't, I can't, I, I've changed. I, I can't even um, pay much attention to the political theater that goes on endlessly in our country. I did listen to some of this woman's opening statement because I wanted to see and hear her because I wanted to get an idea of whether or not this woman was lying. I could not even listen to more than half of her opening statement. I was so disgusted and repulsed with this woman who, as far as I'm concerned, was acting and lying. Her affect, oh, it was, oh, I'm just this um, vulnerable, innocent schoolgirl. The quivering voice that comes on cue, and I'm going to let you listen to how it comes on cue in one moment. I could detail, I could spend an awful lot of time detailing this woman, her body language, her the tone of voice. Um, it was, well, I have to agree with Body Language Ghost, who does her analysis, but she, I think, whispers in the video, like nails on a blackboard listening to her. No, I do not agree with so many people who believe that women just don't lie. Oh, women lie all the time. And they, I have known them, and I have had friends who have used this same kind of manipulation. I'm just innocent. They start talking in like this childlike tone and their voice starts to quiver. And it's like, okay, where did the adult go? Um, they do that to manipulate the response that uh, will be forthcoming when they shut up. Um, and there's also, God, so many, I've heard this throughout my adult life, if only women were in charge. What women? We need, it doesn't matter what gender. It matters, do they have a moral core? You know, it's like, oh, as long as you get a woman in the White House, everything will be just grand and the world will be better off. Like Hillary Clinton doesn't kill people. Innocent people? All right. Um, yeah, I was rather disgusted. Yeah, and when I think back about the Hill, uh, the Thomas Hill hearing, Anita Hill, I believed 100%. The woman, first of all, she didn't write a letter to senators because she felt that it was her obligation. You know, oh, this happened and this man shouldn't be sitting on the Supreme Court. And I, I have... Uh, I've got to tell my story here to prevent this from happening. It was leaked. And Anita Hill did not want to be there. But she was. And she testified. And she answered questions. Not like she was um, eight years old, but the adult woman that she had always been. There was no act. There was, there was a grace. There was dignity. There was integrity. And you could sense it. It resonated. Now I think about a friend, ex-friend that I had <laughs> who, God, I say resonated now. And every time I hear her, you know, mocking me, mimicking me, oh, resonated, resonated. You know, it's like, oh, man, do we have a really immature people. 
All right, this woman is not who she claims she is, and neither is Kavanaugh. But here, just listen to maybe two minutes and see if you can catch the change in tone when she starts talking about the details of that night. I do not remember all of the details of how that gathering came together, but like many that summer, it was almost surely a spur of the moment gathering. I truly wish I could be more helpful with more detailed answers to all of the questions that have and will be asked about how I got to the party and where it took place and so forth. I don't have all the answers and I don't remember as much as I would like to, but the details that about that night that bring me here today are the ones I will never forget. They have been seared into my memory and have haunted me episodically as an adult. Okay, that's enough. I can't listen to this because as far as I'm concerned, when does she start the voice quivering? The details of that night have been seared into my memory. All right, 16 years old. A lot of people have been um, stating that you know she should remember one would remember look when you have traumatic events it is rare that somebody will have full memory even you know when you are attacked as an adult if it was really traumatizing and terrifying um, it's unusual to have a full memory this woman uh uh I'm sorry um, the affect, the tone of voice, the quivering voice, she never really cries, but she sounds like she's about to cry, and she's acting like she's just this little innocent girl, and don't attack me, please, I'm just doing my best as an American citizen. Oh, well, I will link below to Body Language's video on this, and some of what she says I don't agree with. But some of what she says, I do agree with. Listen to her analysis. This woman begins to reveal her true self. And she's no longer the little child that you have to respond really gently. Your response has to be gentle. And then Diane Feinstein responds and it's like, she's talking to a child. We're adults, okay? This, this happened 36 years ago, Christine, and you can't even speak, quote, the details of that night is seared into my memory, unquote. Without your voice quivering, I could understand that maybe when you begin to talk, you know, about some of, you know, the, the details of the actual attack, a woman might begin to cry. But not when she's talking about just generally, you know, the opening statement. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, look, that, the, the real problem I have with lying is you never know the truth. You, we're not going to get to know the truth. This is political theater, and it is to consume a whole lot of time and it's so successful every single time they do this. It consumes so much time and so much is going on that very few are paying attention to. All right. Um, so uh, there was nothing about this woman that I believed. And you can get attacked just for saying that. And there are people who are already um, claiming that Kavanaugh was guilty of this attack. Now, I have a lot to say about Kavanaugh, but I will say I didn't see his testimony, but I heard it in the car. And I will tell you, when he started to cry, I believed that that was real. There was no act there, but men don't act 
you know, like women do uh, when they're manipulating people. Men have different tactics. Um, but the whole thing was truly how anybody could claim that this woman is credible. Uh, it's beyond me. I'm going to let you listen to about two minutes of this, okay? This is... This is uh, in line with the video that I posted earlier when I was talking about, you know, the authority of figures, you know? Mainstream media. They will put on their news shows people and they deem them an authority or an expert and then people just believe that they are and then they say things and they never check out what the experts are saying they just simply believe what the experts are saying listen to these body language experts talk about Kavanaugh and Ford Watch through the eyes of body language experts Keith and Rebecca Scott. I did my best to ignore the memories of the assault. That shows where she finally built a sense of confidence. Her words and the body language around them were raw. Her voice was quivering. Without even a hint, a whiff of an allegation like this. Seeing his body language, his mannerisms, his anger that something occurred in that bedroom and the full truth has not come out. We had them look at the opening statements of Christine Blasey Ford and Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh. Not taking deep breaths, showing that she's nervous and timid, but she came across as a real person. The Scott saying Kavanaugh's testimony was more controlled and aggressive. When you feel the need to overprove and overshare, is if you have to pull people in to your story and make them believe what you're saying. And let me give you that one more detail. That maybe okay, you know, look, people are going to believe what these so-called experts are saying. Uh, they're either they don't care or they're unaware that mainstream media will put people on their shows to to just continue the official narrative and the official narrative is Ford was credible Kavanaugh is not now um, this woman talking about how she was raw and she came across as a real person. She did not to me at all. But the expert is put out there to make you doubt your gut feeling. This woman is so clearly manipulating people. And this expert can't see that. Now, Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh, well, He's got a lot to lose. He has taken a huge hit. His integrity, his dignity. Uh, people now, and the world is seeing that he is a sexual predator. And he tried to rape, you know, one of his um, peers in school. He's married. He's got children. He has his career on the line, his reputation on the line. People get angry and defensive, and they want to defend themselves. So that guy claiming, oh, he's angry and defensive, and that woman saying, well, you know, and they, they just bring up more and more details to defend themselves. That's what people do especially people that are high profile. So don't listen to the experts. How do you get people to not listen to these experts who are just regurgitating, you know, um, more of the official narrative and getting people to believe that so-and-so is credible and the other one is not? People are also, you know, claiming that because she couldn't remember particular, you know, aspects of the experience, that that is cause to suggest that she's lying. Look, you know, this woman, I do believe, is really very, very messed up, as an awful lot of Americans are. Um, clearly does not have much of a moral core, 
and is lying, all right? Uh, and I'll get to the CIA ties and all of these, oh God, the darkness about this woman. But um, when you have traumatic experiences, the earlier uh, or the younger you are, the less likely you will be able to recall a whole lot of the experience. At 16 years of age, I'm sorry, I don't, I think that this woman at 16 would be able to recall a whole lot more. If this experience was as traumatic as she uh, portrays, I do not believe that no one she would not have told anybody. So if it was less traumatic, then she would be able to recall an awful lot more than what she is telling us. Though I do want to say that even adults uh, who have had extremely traumatic, terrifying experiences it's unusual for people to remember the full experience. Kavanaugh has CIA, um, uh, Blasey Ford has CIA connections. Her father, CIA operative all his life. Her brother works for a, a GPS fusion, who GPS fusion, oh, involved in the Clinton affairs, the Clinton Foundation, um, but there are people who are tweeting, Christine Blasey Ford admitted she was an alcoholic back then and regretted being so easy. She told her best friend she had 64 sexual partners between 11th grade and throughout college. She is also a liberal activist who wrote on her Facebook page, Scalia types must be banned from law. I don't think that this woman uh, is as whoo, innocent and vulnerable and fragile and I'm just a little schoolgirl and I'm going to look at you over my glasses because it, it looks kind of like silly and oh, I'm just a stupid blonde who's I don't even well, I don't want to be here but I have to be here because it's the responsible thing to do. And then you get to see who she really is when she gets that really kind of ooh, sharp, um, defiant look. And, well, you kind of wonder. Some students, none of this information I can verify, but I will also tell you, I'm not going to spend my time trying to verify it. I will say this, Kavanaugh should not be sitting on the Supreme Court, and I'll let you know why. But where the hell is that pose here? Um, she goes from, oh, I'm just a pretty little schoolgirl, to a real defiant uh, and it almost looks like there is a viciousness to her. Uh, this is the type of woman that I would stay clear of because I can see within her that there is an awful lot of very screwed up things about her. But that childlike voice and that manipulation Ugh, you can take it and shove it. All right. Um, so, is that true? I, I can't. You know, that, that's the problem with lying. You don't know what is true and what is not unless you were there. And it just creates so much confusion and betrayal and drama and crap. But... 
it, you know, when people write these kinds of things, I do not know any other actual victim that cannot remember specific traumatic emotional distress of any attempted rape, including one where she also feared for her life. Well, then clearly you haven't known people who have had really traumatic experiences um, and either you have not had a really traumatic experience or you're not remembering that traumatic experience because people can have traumatic experiences early on in life and go decades and suddenly something triggers that memory and boom wow okay um, but she's a psychology professor and clearly after 36 years you would think that she had some of that trauma worked out oh you would think but people get into that profession because they do have so many issues and instead of working on their own issues well they get to sit in a seat that is marked well facing their clients who sit in the seat that's marked ill and they get to feel superior and well as they try to help their ill patients clients there are so many people in this profession that are so screwed up beyond belief so it's not a surprise to me that this woman is a psychology professor but when you think about this woman and her act in Congress the manipulations you know how screwed up she is and this is a woman who's teaching the young about psychology okay she also uh, mentors a college job title program named CIA undergraduate internship program Wow okay um, you can you can do the research to verify you know the facts in this article I, I just, I, it, what's the point? Um, you know, we have so much going on. Right now, as I speak, so many agendas are continuing on, ramping up the weather warfare, taking out more and more Americans. If you think I really care about this crap, I don't. I don't. Um, because I know that, you know, there's no way to stop this crap because Americans, on the whole, love this crap. They love crap. They love the lies. They love uh, thinking that they actually know the truth when they don't. Uh, nobody's going to know the truth. You know, I can have my feelings about Christine Blasey Ford. Um, I can state as emphatically as I want, but I have to also say, that is my gut feeling. I don't know if it is absolutely 100% true. The same thing about Kavanaugh. You know, when he was uh, testifying and crying, and yes, I felt it was real. It resonated real. But maybe he's really good as a guy to cry on cue. I don't know. I don't know him. I wasn't there you know, 36 years ago to state whether or not, at that party, to state whether or not that actually took place. That's the only way that we can get to the truth. So all of these Americans who are, you know, voicing on mainstream media that she's not lying um, and he should not go to the Supreme Court, I, not for that reason, you know, it's, uh, the truth is so unbelievably demanding, it requires so much research, and, well, I just, I, I, I really feel sorry for us, actually. I, I'm embarrassed and I feel so, so um, just sorry that we have fallen so low that one woman could make an accusation and bring down people. They can actually destroy just with an accusation. That's all it takes today. That's all it takes. Um,
something is very wrong. But when truth is gone and people, you know, now facts, evidence, who cares about that? I have my opinion and that's all I need. Well, you descend into utter madness. And unfortunately, that madness is not a positive madness. It's not like, hey, jolly, wonderful, I'm having a great time. No. It's the kind of immoral hell that, you know, it's, it's very hard to uh, face. Uh, Russell Ford, her father, senior director, uh, no, her husband, I'm sorry, senior director at Zozano Pharma, Pharma and exclusively specializes in mind-altering drugs. Um, can't verify that because apparently he deleted his Facebook account and removed his name from the company's website. I actually did go to the company website and I can't find uh, his name. Um, but here, this is amazing. What was she and her husband in therapy for? And what caused this? As an average 98% of families do not ever need such treatment? Wow! No, 98% of families do need treatment. They do need therapy. Um, I, you know, reading these articles, I'm like, okay, um, what reality are you living in? Uh, perhaps you've lived a very, very sheltered life and you have been around people who are healthy. Well, I will tell you, 98% of Americans are really unbelievably messed up. And, well, I don't exclude myself. Um, the need for therapy, well, you got to get a good therapist. You got to get a therapist who actually knows what they're doing. You got to get a therapist who actually has worked through their issues so that they can help you work through yours. Oh, well, that that's hard to find. Um, her father, lifelong CIA operative since the 60s and currently provides public security to all deep state officials. Um, her brother, Fusion GPS, linked to the Clintons. Um, uh, this is interesting. Her mother, uh, Brett Kavanaugh's mother, Martha Kavanaugh, she was a district court judge in 1996 in Maryland. Oh, what a coincidence. Martha Kavanaugh was the judge in a foreclosure case in which Christine's parents were the defendants. Christine, her parents, they were defendants. Oh, and Martha Kavanaugh ruled against her parents. Now, can, can women, decades later, have the kind of problems where they would actually want to take revenge against a judge who ruled against her parents? Yeah, yeah, I've known them. And the issues that they have are really, they can really kind of spin out of control and make your life a living hell. Oh, those issues that so many Americans just don't even care about, don't think, don't clean up. Um, well, we're living now, just issue, issue after issue after issue. Uh, so this brother apparently worked for a law firm uh, for 15 years as a litigation partner that retained Fusion GPS, the primary fixer for the Clintons and the D DNC. Okay, you know what? <sighs> Kavanaugh was associate White House counsel 2001 to 2003. He was uh, appointed to an appeals court by George Bush. He helped draft the Patriot Act. The Patriot Act. This is what he said about the Patriot Act. A measured, careful, responsible, constitutional approach to the gutting of our Fourth and Fifth Amendment rights to privacy and due process. Kavanaugh. 
okay? Now he didn't, he didn't, the quote was a measured, careful, responsible constitutional approach. End of quote. I added the gutting part. But that is what this man did. And it was, the Patriot Act was the legislation that really paved the way to this police surveillance state that we are now living. And you can thank Kavanaugh. Uh, the torture memos, the, the, those memos that were leaked in, I don't know, 2004 or 5. Well, those memos were um, drafted when Kavanaugh was an associate counsel, White House counsel. He was also in a meeting uh, and that meeting was in 2002, the Bush administration wanting to uh, know if the Supreme Court would accept an American citizen being labeled an enemy combatant at the discretion of the president. Kavanaugh was at that meeting and he was specifically asked if the Supreme Court would side with the Bush administration. Why? Because Kavanaugh clerked for Justice Kennedy. Kavanaugh voiced concerns that the Supreme Court would not side with the administration, but apparently he lied uh, about his role in that meeting. Now, that information was found out through a Freedom of Information Act. That information was obtained through FICA. Um, so, you know, when Kavanaugh can actually call the Patriot Act a measured, careful, responsible constitutional approach, when it gutted our Constitution, do you really want this guy sitting on the Supreme Court? He will uphold our surveillance state. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. And, you know, he also, um, as an appeals court judge, he ruled that metadata collection is consistent with the Fourth Amendment. Well, it's not. It's unconstitutional. But he has already shown you that he is for the police surveillance state, not for the Constitution, not for your freedom, and not for your rights. In fact, uh, that ruling, the metadata ruling, he had said um, that national security needs outweigh privacy. Okay. That's it. I'll link below to everything. Uh, sorry I do go on, but, you know, information is information, and, you know, I I do talk to an awful lot of people, um, and, well, no, I talk to people, but there's an awful lot of awake people who are still caught in the matrix and still supporting Trump, and they, too, are being fed information about Kavanaugh whether it's from alternative media sites or mainstream media, and they're believing what they hear without checking it out for themselves. All of Trump's appointments have been police state, surveillance state, Agenda 2030, United Nations, um, and corrupt. <laughs> so it's really not good enough to listen to these, you know, sayings, make America great again. Really not good to just believe everything that you hear because it feeds your delusion that America is going to be made great again. It's, you know, it's just another lie, actually.
It's a kind of a roundabout manipulation of yourself to believe what you want to believe instead of really seeking out the truth. Your own self. Ciao.